Hello and welcome again to Immigration News and Views. My name is David Nachman and I'm one of the managing attorneys at Nachman Fawani Zemo Czech Law Group, NPZ Law Group, with offices located in northern New Jersey, New York City, and also we have affiliated offices in Canada and an affiliated office in India. So today I want to discuss a question that was sent in by one of our viewers and we thank you very much for sending these question, questions into us. It's very, very helpful and um, I just want to point out that you, the viewer who sent this question in, you're probably not the only one who had this question so it's really helpful for us to be able to get this information out there to everyone because it helps to uh, answer questions for a lot of different people out there. So October 1st just rolled around. Um, October 1st was of course the start date for many of the H-1Bs that were done uh, in April and um, so a lot of people once they start with their H-1B employers what they often do is they receive offers from other employers and they're thinking about moving their H-1Bs to a new employer. So there's uh, a couple of different ways that that can be done and I want to discuss that uh, within the context of the question that our viewer posed. Uh, our viewer says, I'm, um, I just started my H-1B with Company A on October 1st and I received an offer with Company B and I want to know what the best way to move my H-1B is to Company B. So for this viewer, um, I just want to point out there are a couple of ways to move the H-1B. The first way in which an H-1B can be moved, and many who have watched our prior videos are aware of what's called H-1B mobility, uh, portability, under Section 105. Section 105 of AC21 allows an individual to file a new H-1B with a new employer, so Company B files a new H-1B, and then the individual can port and start work as soon as that H-1B has been uh, submitted. Now, the problem with that, however, and I'm going to point this out to, uh, uh, you know, to all our viewers, is that using portability is fine as long as the porting works. But let's take a scenario where the porting doesn't work. So, for example, if an individual, let's say, is porting to Company B, but then the H-1B for Company B gets denied, what's essentially happened is the individual has moved away from Company A. It's unlikely that Company A is going to be helping that individual again because they've probably uh, left that company, maybe burned a bridge, and moved on to Company B. If that H-1B is denied, the individual will be working without work authorization with Company B and unfortunately will probably not be able to get back to Company A. And that, of course, that unauthorized work, you have to consider the possibility of the implications of that unauthorized work with regard to moving forward with the green card application in the future because if you have unauthorized work, then of course that could, not, that could be uh, a basis for denial of a green card application in the future, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. So portability, again, is a great methodology for moving an H-1B to a new company, but only when the porting works, not when the porting doesn't work. So there are all kinds of issues with regard to porting, and we're always very reticent to recommend to our clients to use the portability process. What could be a better process to use to move your H-1B would be to file the new H-1B with Company B, or Company B, of course, would file the H-1B for the individual who's moving, and then to premium process the case. Assuming premium processing goes through, and um, of course, if you get a re request for evidence in RFE, it might slow the process down, but with premium processing, the payment of an additional $1,225 fee to the U.S. federal government, you should be able to get a turnaround time of approximately two weeks. And if it's not an initial two weeks, it'll be two weeks from the time that you uh, give your response to the government on the RFE that you might uh, obtain in that case. So once you have the approval of the H-1B, then of course the individual can move over to the new company. So in terms of timing, a lot of people ask us what's the timing to be able to move to company B if you have an offer. So usually what we say is a good period of time might be about three to five weeks to consider, uh, assuming that you respond rapidly to the RFE that might be received in that premium processing case. If you or any member of your staff have any questions at all with regard to the H-1B process 
or with regard to moving the H-1B to a new place of employment, please feel free to contact any of the immigration lawyers or attorneys here at the NPZ Law Group. We're more than happy to assist you. Thanks very much for sending in your questions, and we look forward to providing new and additional information for you in the future. Bye now.